Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful and, Lord, so thankful, Lord, for the freedom that we have to worship you. And, Father, I pray for this service tonight. God, every song we sing, every word we speak, God, will bring praise, glory, and honor to you. God, we understand tonight it's not about us. It's all about you. And I pray, God, that you'd have your way here in this service. And, Father, I pray, God, that you bless this offering tonight. God, multiply it and help us to use it, God, for your purpose and your glory. And God will never fail to give you the honor and the glory and the praise that you deserve. God, we come to lift you up tonight. God, we ask all this in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Testing, Amen. Just a side note. Um... To my knowledge, I haven't been, we haven't been given any song requests for the uh, hymn sing, so I don't want you to worry about that right now. There you go. All right. Amen. Let's start off with this old hymn, favorite hymn, He Set Me Free. Yeah. 
washed in the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight, like a blind man that God gave back his sight. Oh, wretched oh, yes. that's found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. In the blood of Jesus, I've been born again. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out and show me the way. Hallelujah, I'm saved, saved, saved by His wonderful grace. Glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way. Show me the way. Amen. Lift your hands tonight, church, and just thank God for his freedom, his liberty, amen, and his grace. Thank God I am free. Amen. You hold my every moment You calm my raging sea You walk with me through fire And heal all my disease I trust in you I trust in you. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. I believe.
Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands. Sing it, church. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. No, nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world. Sing it one more time. Oh, nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. love you and thank you so much, God, for who you are. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, God tells us to come to him with childlike faith. Now, I'm very thankful for doctors and medicine and everything that we have today to where we can take those things and go to the doctors and they can give us a diagnosis. But ultimately, we all know God has the final say-so. We all know God can, get, can say, yeah, the doctor said this, but I'm going to do this. That's what God can do. And because he calls us to go to him with childlike faith, I'm reminded of what our daughter Graylin likes to do. She may get a cut because she's a child. She runs around and falls. She may have a cut. She may have a hangnail or whatever. And we say, here, let's put a Band-Aid on it. Let's put some medicine on it. And you know what she tells us sometimes? She says, no, no, no. Jesus has got it. And as cute and as adorable as that is, we need to have the same childlike faith. When we're sick, when we're bruised, when we're beaten up, Jesus is going to take care of it. We can go to the doctors, we can take the medicine, but ultimately Jesus is going to take care of it. Can we sing this one more time? And let's have that childlike faith as we sing this one more time. Lift your hands tonight and say, Jesus, I place it at your feet and I know you're going to take care of it. Let's sing this one more time. Nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Thank you. 
you're my portion. I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. You're more than enough for me. Hallelujah. If you have a need this evening, would you let us know by lifting your hands? Let's take these before the Lord. Lord Jesus, God, we just come before you with childlike faith tonight. We thank you, God, that you've allow doctors and modern medicine to be here for us, Lord. But God, we know you have the ultimate final say. Jesus, you're going to take care of it tonight. We place it at your feet. We put all of our faith and our hope in you tonight, Lord. Would you have your way tonight? Because nothing, nothing, Lord, is impossible for you. We thank you for this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Recently, we've heard messages about holding on, not quitting. We heard a recent sermon here about keep fighting. In fact, that I believe Sister Stephanie, you and I looked at each other about this time last Sunday and uh, thought about the same song that we're about ready to, to finish with before Pastor brings the word. Keep on the firing line. If you're in the battle for the Lord and right, keep on the firing line. If you win, my brother, surely you must fight. Keep on the firing line. There are many dangers that we all must face. If we die of fighting, there is no disgrace. Coward in the service, he will find no place. Keep on the firing line. You must fight, be brave against all evil. Never run, nor even fight behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the firing line. God will only use us soldier he can't trust. Keep on the firing line. If you wear a crown and bear the cross you must. Keep on the firing line. Life is but to labor for the master dear. Help to banish evil and to spread good cheer. Pray you'll be rewarded for your service here. So keep on the firing line. Sing it, church. Oh, you must fight and be brave against all evil. Never run nor even lag behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the firing line. When we get to heaven, brother, we'll be glad. Keep on the firing line. I will praise the Savior for the call we had. Keep on the firing line. When we see the souls that we have helped to win, leading them to Jesus from the path of sin. With a shout of welcome, we will all march in. Keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight and be brave against all evil. Never run nor leave the light behind. If you would win for God and the righteous, keep on the firing line. Oh, you must fight and be brave. Against all evil, 
up their mind, I'm going to fight to the end. I may get knocked down, I may get pushed down, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to keep fighting until I make it home. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated tonight. But I believe tonight there's some testimonies that need testified, so I want to take a minute to give an opportunity. If you have a testimony tonight, I'd like you to share that testimony. Hold on, Bill. I got one that beat you up. Elizabeth, go ahead. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. All right, Brother Bill. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Brother Noel.
Amen. 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 Praise, Praise God. God. Anybody, Anybody else? else? Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Anybody else? That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank, 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 thank you, you Micah. Micah. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <clears throat> Anybody else? Oh, hey, you better get up. No. <laughs>
Amen. 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 Anybody else? All right. If you have your Bibles tonight, going once, going twice, sold. No. Proverbs 3, verse number 5. Good to hear the testimonies on how God still hears and answers prayer. Amen. So if you heard somebody testify tonight and you're praying about something, how many knows you can stand on the promise if God answered their prayer, he can answer your prayer tonight. Proverbs 3, verse number 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Tonight I want to preach on the simple thought of trust him. Trust him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for these testimonies. God, I thank you, Lord, because you are still a God that is able to answer prayer. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity and this privilege, Lord, to stand behind this pulpit and declare the word of truth. And Father, I pray tonight, God, that you would use me, God, that you would anoint me, and God, that you would help me to deliver what you want delivered here tonight. And God, everything that I speak, God, let me speak it under the unction and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, anoint every ear to hear it and every heart to receive it. And God, I pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, trust him. Trust him. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Trust him. I was encouraged by the word last Sunday night. Amen. Now, I I wasn't going to share this, but I just want to share. This is what I felt like the Lord laid on my heart. But Monday morning, I was had every intention to coming over here to the church and then going to make a visit right after I got done here at the church. But I woke up and Sunday night I didn't have a voice, but I woke up and didn't feel good and still didn't have a voice, but I was determined to get over here to the church and pray and just seek the Lord for services this weekend. And I went out to the truck and turned over the truck and it didn't start. I kept hearing a voice just saying, trust me, trust me. And I was like, I don't know who to call because I don't have, I don't know who to call. It was like before, it was about seven o'clock and I didn't want to call nobody at seven o'clock in the morning to come over and jump me. And I thought, well, if they jumped me, I, well, at first I looked to see if I could change myself, and there was a bar across it, a box on top of it with all this stuff on it. It was like, oh, man, I don't have time to watch a video to figure out how to change it. And if I do change it, I don't know how I'm going to get to the place to get a new battery to change it. But anyway, I just felt like the Lord just saying, kept saying, trust me, trust me. But anyway, he reminded me I forgot my dad had given me a battery charger when, when they moved to town back when they lived out on 900. This thing's old as dirt, but it still worked. But anyway, I got that battery charger out and I put it on there and I was able to let it just run for a few minutes and able to get the truck started. And, and so it started up and I was afraid if I got over here to the church to pray and to study that if I went back out, it wouldn't start. And I didn't want to call nobody and bother nobody to jump start. So I had a plan that I was going to go get the van and bring it up and get the cables, you know, and jump myself. But anyway, I called AutoZone to see, well, maybe because Nate got his battery changed there and they changed it for him for free. I called him. Oh, no, that's too difficult. We won't change it. So I called somewhere else. Well, we can't get you in until 11 o'clock. And finally, I got a whole firestone said first they couldn't get me in until 11. And then uh, I was like, oh, I can't wait till 11. I need it done now. And and so everything was going on, and I just kept feeling like the Lord just saying, Keep, just trust me, just trust me. So anyway, Firestone called me back and said, well, you got the answer service. We can get you in right now if you'll come on over right now. I was like, praise God, because I was afraid to shut the thing off because it may not start. It had been dragging the whole time we were in Florida because we took that to Florida, and it was dragging while we were there. But thank God it didn't die while we were down there in Florida. I don't know what we would have done. But anyway, I just felt like the Lord just kept saying, trust me. But anyway, he, he got me in there at Firestone, and they only charged like $20 to change the battery out. And I just want to give honor to God and, and praise God because it, it seemed like a bad thing. And I didn't know what I was going to do, who I was going to call, but God just worked everything out. So I want to give honor to him tonight. And I, Amen. 
So tonight in our lives, we all have to come to a place to learn to trust in Him. Amen. Just because you're a preacher, just because you're a teacher or a singer or or you claim to know Christ as your Lord and Savior, it may not always be easy to trust Him. My battery going dead don't compare to somebody that's sick and afflicted in pain and agony, but we all have to learn to trust in Him. Amen. Trust in the Lord, the Bible says, with all thine heart. Now, I didn't come here tonight to ask you to put your trust in me because I'll fail you. I didn't ask you tonight to put your trust in our church because our church will fail you. Amen. I didn't ask you tonight to put your trust in a denomination because how many knows tonight denominations will fail you. Amen. I didn't come tonight to ask you to put your trust in a political party or a politician because how many knows they surely will fail you. Amen. But I came tonight, amen, to ask you if you'll only put your trust Amen. In him. Amen. The Bible says to trust in the Lord. Amen. Trust in him. Amen. I didn't ask you to put your trust in a God that is dead, that is asleep, that no longer again, amen, exists. Amen. But I come tonight, amen, to ask you to put your faith and put your trust in the Lord. Amen. Our God's not dead. He's not asleep. Amen. But he's alive forevermore. And we can put our faith and our trust in him. Amen. People let us down. But God never lets us down. How many knows he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? He never loses power. He never loses ability. He doesn't age with time. He doesn't weaken with all the stuff that's going on in this world. He still holds all power and authority and ability tonight. Amen. But we must learn to trust in him. And the Bible says, trust him with all your heart. Amen. Do you trust the Lord with all your heart tonight? Or are you still working on it? See, it's easy to trust the Lord. Amen. When everything's going your way. But what about when things fall apart all around you? Do you still trust him? When you don't know what you're going to do, do you still trust him? Amen. When the thing that you've been praying for, amen, you think is God's going to answer and it all blows up in your face, do you still trust him? That loved one you've been praying for, amen, that one that you've been calling out to God seems to be getting worse and worse and farther and farther away from God. Do you still trust him? Amen. When you wake up and you don't know what to do, do you trust him? Amen. When the bills, amen, seem to be bigger than how much is coming in, do you still trust him? I believe tonight when we trust him with all of our heart, amen, our circumstance don't determine our trust. We trust him anyway. We trust him in spite of everything going my way or not going my way. When something catches me off guard, how many knows God still has a plan and God still has a purpose and it didn't surprise God? I still got to trust him. Amen. When you trust him with all your heart, you'll trust him no matter what happens. Amen. And we need to quit leaning on our own understanding i know that's a hard one when we trust him with all of our heart how many knows we have to learn to lean on him and quit leaning on our own understanding amen when we lean on our own understanding we're not really trusting him like we should be hey amen and when we lean on our own understanding we're not trusting him with all of our hearts Amen, because when we lean on our own understanding, amen, we limit God. Because how many knows we are limited in our abilities and our resources, but God is never limited, amen, by resource or ability. God is more than able to do what we need tonight. So quit leaning on your own understanding and start trusting him tonight. Amen. 
We need to start trusting God for things that are way bigger than we are. I said it this morning. We need to, we need to trust God for some crazy things. Some things that people say, you're nuts for believing God for that. We need to believe God for things where people said there's no way that can happen. Amen. How many knows with God, all things are possible, but we have to learn to lean on Him and quit leaning on ourselves and trust Him. Amen. So many times we want to lean on ourselves, but when we do, we're saying, God, I don't trust you. I believe. Oh, how many knows God can take the little we have and make it more than enough if we'll trust him? But if we try to take the little we have and try to work it out in our own abilities, in our own thinking, in our own power, how many knows God may not be able to do what God desires to do? We tie God's hands up. Amen. Remember when Jesus walked the earth, what, what caused him not to do what he desired to do? Doubt and unbelief. And I believe when we don't trust God and we lean on our own understandings, we're doubting and unbelieving God. Uh-oh, that was hard. Anyway, we need to trust Him in our finances. One amen. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. Nine, yeah, 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and the presses shall burst out with new wine. I believe when we truly trust the Lord in our finances, we give Him our first fruits. Amen. Before we write out anything else, we write out our tithe unto God. Amen. Because if we pay our bills first, and then we write out our tithes, how many knows we're giving God our leftovers? When we say, God, I trust you. I trust you when I don't know how. I'm going to make ends meet. I'm going to write out my tithes by faith. And I'm going to believe you're going to make what I have more than enough. I'll testify to you today and tell you that God can make what little you have more than enough. If you'll trust him and put him first. He says, bring your first fruits into the storehouse. Or, 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 he said, honor the Lord with thy substance and with thy first fruit of all thine increase. Amen. Give him your first. Give him your best. He gave his all for you. He gave his life. He gave his best for you and I. So if we want to trust God in our finances, I believe we need to trust him with our first fruits. Amen. All right, I'll move on because I know nobody likes to talk about finances. But if you want to be blessed of God, Put him first. Trust God even when you're persecuted. Uh-oh. We like that one. Psalm 7 verse 1. Oh Lord my God. In thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me. And deliver me. How many knows in this life we will have trouble. We will have tribulation. And we will get persecuted for the cause of Jesus Christ. Especially today in the day and hour we live in. Now we don't face the persecutions like they faced in the Bible days. But people will not like you for what you stand. And if you stand against what everybody says is okay. Amen. People will not always like you. But we must trust God even when we stand for what we know is right and truth. And people may hate us and not like us for our stand. We must continue to stand and trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't waver in what you believe because everybody else is wavering. You trust God. And if people come against you, you lift up your hands and thank God that I've been counted worthy to be persecuted for Christ. Amen. We don't suffer near like they suffered in the old days. Amen. But we will be persecuted for our stand for the Lord Jesus Christ, especially in the day and hour we live, and it's going to continue to get worse. Amen? People will come against you just because you stand for the truth. How many knows they don't want to hear the truth today? They want to hear the watered down, make me feel good message. But we must continue to pro proclaim the truth of the gospel and trust that God's going to do the work. 
We're not proclaiming the gospel out of hate, right? We shouldn't be proclaiming the truth out of hate, but we should be proclaiming the truth out of love, knowing that God wants to heal that thing that they're in. Amen? All right, let's go on. Trust God in every area of your life. Proverbs 3, verse 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. When we learn to acknowledge God in all of our ways, we're saying, God, I trust you in every area of my life. Amen? We need to trust God in our marriage. We need to trust God in our family. We need to trust God in our work. We need to trust God in every area of our lives by acknowledging Him in everything we do and in every area of our lives. Amen. When we acknowledge God, we're saying, God, I trust you. I trust you with my wife, with my marriage. I trust you with my kids, my family. I trust you with my finances. I trust you in every area of my life. Amen. The Bible says to acknowledge him in all thy ways. Amen. Not just the hard stuff. In every area of our life. Every single day we ought to get up and acknowledge God. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'll rejoice and I'll be glad in it. Because why? I trust him and I acknowledge him as my Lord. Amen. Trust the Lord more than man. Psalms 118, verse 8. It's better to trust in the Lord than put confidence in man. See, a lot of times it's easier to put your trust and your faith in a preacher or a teacher or a man or a woman because you can see them and you don't have to have much faith. Sometimes people will tell you what you want to hear to make you feel good. Anyway, how many knows it's better to trust in the Lord? I may feel like God's saying do this and tell you to do this, but how many knows you shouldn't trust what I say, you should trust what God says, because God can see it a whole lot better than what I can see it. But sometimes we like to put our faith and our trust in somebody that we can see and somebody that will give us the plan. How many knows we can't walk by faith, I mean walk by sight, we got to walk by faith. Because God may not always give you the whole plan. God may say, trust me and step. And when you step, God will be there to help you, amen, as you can continue with the next step. But sometimes we'd rather put our faith and our trust in a man or woman that we can see with our natural eyes. But we got to put our faith and our trust in a God that we may not be able to see with our natural eyes. we got to have faith and believe that he is who he says he is. We had to have faith when we came to him in salvation, right? We had to have faith and believe. Amen. We had to trust that when we confessed our sin to him, we had to trust and believe by faith that he was going to forgive us of those sin. Amen. Trust him when, you prob- when problems arise in your life. Because they will. We all have problems and they're different from one another. But we all have problems. Psalms 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength. I've quoted this upside down, sideways, I don't know how many times. Hopefully you got it marked in your Bible. You need to know tonight, God is your refuge and strength. And he said, I'm a very present help in trouble. Amen. When problems come to our lives, amen, we need to run to God. We need to run into our prayer closet. Amen. And we need to run to our refuge and allow him to give us the strength and the ability we need to go through what we go through. He didn't say, come to me and all your troubles will be gone for the rest of your life. But he did say today, amen, I'll be your refuge. I'll be your strength and I will be very present with you you in in the time time of of your your trouble trouble. when When you you can't can't feel him when when you can't can't see how many knows you got to trust and believe believe he is who he says he is he He said i'll be your refuge and your strength and i'll be very present so you need to know that you know amen he's still there amen 
Trust him even when you got problems. When problems arise in your life, know that God's bigger than your problems. And know that if you run to him, he'll give you the strength you need to get through what you've got to go through. Amen. God don't run when trouble comes. Run to him when your trouble comes. Let him be your refuge and your strength. So many times we withdraw from God. We question, we blame, and we try to rationalize and figure out why things are happening the way they're happening. Amen. We just need to step forward and say, God, I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't understand it, but God, I trust you. I believe that you're my refuge. I believe that you're my strength. And I believe you're very present. I can't feel you. I can't see you. But I know that I know that I know you're still there. Amen? Why? Because he said it in his word. If we don't read this book, we won't know. Amen? All right, let's go on. We should not fear when we trust the Lord. Psalms 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. When bad things happen in our lives, which they will, how many knows we don't have to be afraid if we're trusting in the Lord? Remember, God did not give us the spirit of fear, right? God gave us, amen, power and love and a sound mind. But if God didn't give us the spirit of fear, where does fear come from? Fear comes from the enemy. He tries to grip our hearts with fear. He tries to cause us to fear so we don't trust God. He tries to cause us to fear so we'll lean on our own understanding and say, God doesn't care about you. God don't really love you. Because if God cared about you and really loved you, you wouldn't be going through what you're going through. He'll try to bring fear to your heart saying, God's not with you anymore. How many knows God didn't give us the spirit of fear? We don't have to fear today. We need to know that God is the victor and we're not the victims. We're playing the victim card. Start living in victory today. Amen. Why? Because I trust in the Lord. Why? Because I'm some big spiritual person? No, because I serve a God that owns it all, that is able to do it all and can do more than I can even imagine and think. We need to trust God more than we trust our stuff. Oh, Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. Some people put their trust in their stuff, but what do you do when all your stuff's gone? Do you still trust him? Some people trust in the might and the power of their horses and their chariots. Hey man, some trust in all the stuff they may have. They may trust in their home, their cars, their money, whatever it might be. But what if all that is gone? How many knows it can be gone in an instant of time? Will you still trust God if you lose it all? Or if you got your faith, trust in your stuff. We need to learn to trust God more than our stuff. We ain't got no stuff. We still got God. And we can trust him. Amen. Trust that he never leaves. Matthew 28 verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always. Amen. I'm with you always. Did you get that? Even unto the end of the world. We need to trust what thus saith the word of God. Jesus spoke these words. Amen. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you to the very end. Amen. As we walk through the valley, as the trials and tests of our lives, we need to know that the Lord hasn't left me. He hasn't forgotten me. He hasn't forsaken me, but I trust him because he said in his word, lo, I'm with you always, always. Always in the good times, in the storms, in the fire, in the flood, and through all things that happen in our lives, God is with us. And we need to remember that and trust what he said in his word. I'm with you always. Amen. Even when you can't see him working, even when you can't understand how things are going to work out, know that he's with you and he has a plan. Amen. We need to trust his promises. Second Corinthians 1 verse 20. For all the promises of God in he- are in heaven are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. How many knows we need to trust the promises of God? 
We need to know tonight that the promises of God are already settled in heaven. Amen. There ain't no devil in hell that can change them. There ain't no trial that you go through can weaken them. There ain't nothing or nobody that can stand in the way of God's promises. If God gave you a promise, you need to stand and trust. Amen. And believe that God is going to fulfill that which he has promised. Amen. If God made a promise in his word and it may look like it will not be fulfilled, how many knows God is not a liar and God will fulfill his promises. Amen. God will take care of Israel. Amen. God will protect his people. Amen. But we need to trust. We need to pray for them. We need to believe God that he's going to intervene for them. Amen. Right now, everybody's coming against them, but God said he's going to protect and take care of them. Amen. We need to pray and we need to ask God to intervene for them today. Amen. But we need to believe that God made a promise to them and God will fulfill his promise. Just like he's made us promises in his word. He may individually gave you some promises, something you've been praying about. Amen. And God's promised that he's going to fulfill that. And it may look like it hasn't happened yet. You may not see when it will happen. But you need to trust and believe that if God made that promise, he will fulfill that which he has promised. Amen. God is not a liar. And God's not a taker backer. God don't give you a promise that, oops, I shouldn't have done that. Have you ever made a promise to somebody and you couldn't keep it? Don't lie in church. Have you ever made a promise and you couldn't keep the promise? Come on, be honest. How many knows God can't raise his hand tonight? God never made a promise that he can't keep. We as human beings, we make promises and sometimes circumstances happen where we cannot fulfill those promises. But God, amen, when he makes a promise, there ain't nothing or nobody that can keep God from fulfilling that promise. Amen. Do you trust him tonight? Do you believe he's able to fulfill that promise that he's made to you? You may not know how or when, but you need to know he will fulfill that promise. In closing tonight, as we return to the music, how I many knows if we trust him, he'll direct our path? That's what he said. That's his promise. Did he say it? He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall, no question about it, he shall direct thy path. If we learn to trust Him, we learn to acknowledge Him, we need to believe that God will acknowledge, I mean, God will direct my path. Amen. As we stand to our feet tonight, if we will learn to trust the Lord and acknowledge Him, He will direct our path. And we need to know tonight that when I trust God, that God has a plan and a purpose for everything that happens in our lives. Nothing catches God by surprise. That thing that caught you off guard that you didn't see coming, God already has a path prepared for you to get through what you have to go through. So we bow our heads and close our eyes. Maybe you're here tonight. Maybe you haven't been trusting God like you know you should. Maybe you haven't come to a place in your life where you can say, I truly trust the Lord with all my heart that's you I want you to come to this altar tonight and say God help me to trust you more help me Lord to come to a place where I can trust you with all my heart or maybe you're here tonight you haven't been trusting God like you know you should come tonight say Lord help me to trust you more maybe you're here you've been trusting God with some things but other things You've been leaning on your own understanding and not giving them over to God. Come on, somebody else. The altars are open. If you need to trust God tonight for something, maybe you've been praying about something and it hasn't happened yet. And maybe your faith has become weak. And maybe even the question has come up, well, can really God do this? Come tonight and say, God, I trust you. And I'm going to stand on your promise. And I'm going to believe you're going to fulfill that which you have promised tonight.
Hey man, anybody else? The altars are open. If you don't want to come to the front, right where we're at, let's all find us a place of prayer. Say, Lord, help me to trust you more. Help me to trust you more. God still moves in the hearts of His people. God still moves. He does not sleep, nor does He slumber. God still moves. God still moves. My God.
Tonight, the Word of God's challenged us to continue to trust Him. We need to trust Him more now than ever before. Amen. Appreciate you being here. Remember all the announcements. Amen. Let's bow our heads and be dismissed. Brother Cody, will you dismiss us tonight?
I lean on you. 